Welcome to the Introduction to Criminology uh, uh, class. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, Chapter 2 today, uh, which is called The Crime Picture. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, the different types of crime uh, collection data methods in the United States. Uh, when you see uh, that crime is going up or crime is going down in the United States, where exactly does this uh, data come from and where does it, um, how is it calculated um, and who manages the data? Uh, and what is the value of the data? Well, the da data are valuable uh, and it can be used to shape public policy. In other words, you can create new laws. Uh, you can uh, analyze and evaluate existing programs to see if they need to additional funding or need, need to be scrapped. Um, you can de develop funding requests, such as um, a lot of universities and, and participate in writing uh, proposal, grant proposals, trying to seek um, funding from the National Institute of Justice, uh, on, uh, um, funding to, um, to do a proposal and to do a study on something. Uh, so that is one way that the value of the uh, crime data um, and the collection of crime data can be used. Uh, what are the sources of data? That means, uh, where does the data come from, and, and, and who collects the data, who manages the data? Well, nationally, the crime statistics come from two major sources. One is the Uniform Crime Reports, also known as US, UCR. And some people say uh, Uniform Criminal Reports. Uh, students in the past have written this, but this is not correct. It's Uniform Crime Reports. The second one is the National Crime Victimization Survey, NCVS. So both of those acronyms you will have to know, uh, UCR and NCVS. Uh, there are some additional uh, uh, avenues for data. One is called PERF. Another one is self uh, offender self-reports, where you actually interview offenders and, and see what they have to say based on a, uh, a questionnaire. And then there's a source book called uh, Criminal Justice Statistics uh, by the NIJ, and some people uh, use that to get crime uh, statistics from. Uh, but out of the two main ones, the UCR and the NCVS, the predominantly one, the predominant one is the UCR. This is used in the media. This is used by uh, police departments uh, at local and state level. This is the number one crime reporting data uh, uh, avenue or data source uh, in the United States. Let's take a look uh, first at the Uniform Crime Reports. Uh, the report, or it was created in the 1930. In 1930, some books have it in 1929, but we're going to go with 1930 here. The data are collected by the FBI. So the FBI manages the UCR uh, program. There is approximately 16,000 police agencies who provide the data, that's local and state, who provide the data uh, to the FBI to be analyzed. And uh, only crimes known to the police are included. Well, this is important because those are crimes that only only reported crimes are reported to the um, UCR. Also, law enforcement agencies submit uh, reports to UCR on a voluntary basis. So this is important and is often cited as a weakness in the UCR report, uh, in the UCR crime stats because it's voluntarily. Now in the state of North Carolina, like some other states, it is, uh, it is mandatory uh, t for law enforcement agencies to report to UCR. But out of the 16,000 police departments, the majority by far report voluntarily or don't report at all. And then we have, uh, in, until 2006, the UCR was reported as crime index. So you would see in the media, uh, uh, the, uh, the crime index is going up or the crime index is going down. 
Well, that was changed uh, in 2006 to what is called now called the crime rate. So when you see in the media, you hear on news that the crime rate is going up or crime rate going down, they're talking about UCR statistics. UCR is made up of part one offenses. And this was the, the, uh, true until uh, later on uh, uh, excluding arson. Uh, but arson was added later on. But these are called the index, the crime index is called part one offenses. We have two categories that make up the UCR. The first one is the violent crime category. And the second one is the property crime category. Uh, and you will have to know these uh, eight offenses that make up the part one offenses. Uh, the, four, the four that make up the violent crime uh, category uh, are, the offenses are murder, rape, robbery, assault. Now we don't want to confuse the word murder with homicide. There's a difference. All murders are homicides, but not all homicides are murder because you could have, uh, uh, you could have a homicide that's, uh, uh, that's justifiable homicide. So all murders are homicides, but not all homicides are murder. So you, you don't want to write homicide in there. You want to write murder, rape, robbery, and assault. Then we have property crime. We have burglary, larceny, motor vehicle theft, and arson. Uh, then we look at the crime rate. Uh, most UCR information is reported as rate of crime. Uh, it used to be called the crime index, but now it's the rate of crime. Uh, and the crime rate equals the number of crimes divided by 100,000 population of a city. And the rates allow for comparison across areas and in times. Now, the book doesn't show this, but we will cover this on how to calculate uh, the crime rate in the United States. This is very important. You can do it for your own area once you learn this and everything. Let's just take a look at how we do this. Uh, first, uh, you, you need to take your population and divide it by 100,000. See, previously we just said up there we have the crime rate equals number of crimes divided by 100,000 population. So let's use these numbers uh, as an example. We have a population of 2,479,338. And we want to look at, out of that population, we want to see um, how many murders there are per 100,000. So you could divide that by 100,000 to get 24.79338, but there's a more simpler matter, to, a simple matter to do that. What you can do is you take the decimal on the far right side, which is uh, right after the eight, and you can rem you can move it to the left five places, and you don't have to divide or anything. You just move it to the layer of five places, and that would put it at 24.79338. And what this means is that there are there are 24.79338 groups of 100,000 people in the 2,479,338 population. So, so now how many murders would there be for each of these group of 100,000? So let's do this. We've got 221 murders that's report that's been reported uh, that that year, a particular year in this city. So we divide that uh, by the 24.79338. Now it's important when you do this on your calculator that you enter on your calculator the 221 uh, first, or whatever crime it might be. You might be looking at rape or, 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 
or robberies or whatever, but you always enter uh, the crime first. In this case, it's murders 221 divided by uh, 24.79338. And the answer is that is 8.9136. Now, you don't have to carry it all those uh, decimal places. If you just carry 8.91, that would be good enough. So, what does the 8.91 mean? So, for every group of 100,000 people, there are 8.9 murders. So, there's 8.9 murders per 100,000 people in this city, which is very high. So, this is what this is how you calculate the crime rate. Um, and now, on exams, you're going to have to be able to explain what each one of these steps uh, are. We're looking at the major shifts in the crime rate uh, uh, rates. Uh, in the early 40s, there was a sharp dr uh, drop in crime rate as many young men went off to World War II. And then in the early 60s to the 90s, there was a dramatic dramatic increase in crime rates as police professionalism and victim reporting uh, grew. And also there was a civil unrest during the 60s. And then we had from 91 to 2006, there was a significant decline in most major crime rates as funding for crime fighting increased and many embraced a quote, a get tough attitude. And we saw this with the drug, the fight against drug, uh, lock them up, throw away the key uh, 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 attitude. And then from 2006 onward, violent crime rates started to, to rise again, pushed by economic uncertainty, more teens, copycat crimes, and social disorganization. In the last three or four years, uh, uh, the violent crime rate has rose 11%. So we got UCR, uh, and what is a clearance rate? Well, clearance rates are based on arrest, not judicial disposition. So in other words, they're based on arrests and not convictions. Uh, and let's, how do you figure out the clearance rate? Well, it's the number of crimes solved uh, over the number of crimes committed. For example, in the, six, in the 60s, we had a, a murder rate clearance rate of about 90 to 92 percent over the over the decades until now uh that solution rate for murder has dropped to down to the, about 60 percent now there's several causes for this um, um the one of the main causes is there's more uh there's more uh murders that are um a stranger to stranger that means there's no relationship between the victims. This could be serial type killings or drug related killings. Let's look at uh, the definition of murder uh, or homicide in this case. Uh, the, the unlawful killing of a human being by another. Now this, we inherited this from our, our Britain uh, under as common law, so this the unlawful killing of another human being is a common law definition, and this includes all willful unlawful homicides, non-negligent manslaughter, but it excludes suicides, deaths caused by accidents or negligence, and attempted murder. Let's look at uh, data on murder. This is the least likely part one offense to occur. So this is uh, very important for you to take note. So murder is the least likely of the part UCR offense to occur. It also has the highest clearance rate because I mean murder is a serious uh, crime, and 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 they throw the uh, you know law enforcement resources behind them. So it has the highest clearance rate. Uh, murders are more common during warmer months and in southern states. Well, this is true because more people are out and about in the spring and summer, um, so you're more out to have interactions. Uh, more murders occur in the southern states. Some research studies suggest 
that this uh, is because of a more of a gun culture uh, that we have in the South. Uh, most victims and perpetrators are aged between 20 to 24. And the weapon most often used are, are firearms. And the victim offender relationship uh, are mostly uh, acquaintances. Most murders occur between people who know them. Uh, who know each other rather than strangers. Then we have multiple uh, killings. We have spree killers, we have mass killers, and we have serial killers. Now spree are two or more people killed on more than one occasion. And this would be sort of like the DC sniper case. Then we have a mass uh, killing. This is three or more people killed in a single event in like one geographical location. That would be the school shootings that you see. There's been several um, uh, in, in you know decades ago, McDonald's killings, Columbine. These are mass killings. Then we have serial killings. These are uh, uh, several victims killed in three or more separate events uh, and over time. And what they mean by over time here is a cooling off event such as weeks, months, or sometimes years. And the FBI has put this at um, three or more victims over time. Then we have forcible rape. Our next crime is forcible rape. And this is a, a common law definition uh, of forcible rape, the carnal knowledge of a female forcibly and against her will. Now, what we did when we inherited these common law um, uh, uh, definitions in the United States, we codified it into law from based on each state. For example, uh, in, in in state of North Carolina, we have um, uh, the, the the forcible rape or the rape charge. Uh, you know, you have to have vaginal penetration and you have to have some type of weapon involved uh, to make it first degree. We broke it down in degrees, and then in the second degree. Um, there's different uh, type of uh, crime elements that have to be present. Uh, then the third degree, or, or what would they call sexual assault. Uh, this excludes a, assault if the victim is male, statutory rape, sex, same-sex rapes, and other sex crimes. However, over the recent years, all this has changed. Uh, they're, they're, they're attempting to move the term rape out of the, out of the language and replace it with sexual assault. And they've done that, and it includes uh, rape of any, anyone, male or female. Let's look at the robbery. Robbery is the, the unlawful taking or the, uh, uh, the attempt to take a property that is in the immediate possession of another by force or violence and or by putting the victim, the victim in fear, and this uh, does not include pickpocketing or purse snatching. Let's look at aggravated assault. It's an unlawful inflicting of serious injury upon the person of another. Now, this is important. This is separate from a simple assault. Aggravated assault usually there is some type of injury that might require going to a hospital. This includes attempted assaults, especially when a deadly weapon is used. The possible use of a gun, knife, or other weapon that could result in serious in injuries. And it excludes simple assault. Burglary. Uh, the unlawful entry of a structure to commit a felony or theft therein. Uh, the types of burglaries. Uh, forcible entry, unlawful entry without force and attempted forcible entry. Um, now, the key here is the, uh, with the idea of committing a felony within. So if you, if you break into somebody's house and you steal something, the stealing is the felony and it makes, the, a burglar, it makes that burglar and makes that a felony. Larceny theft. This is um, the most reported crime in the United States. The unlawful taking or the attempt to take in, uh, 
or carrying, leading, or riding away a property from the possession of another. It does not include motor vehicle thefts. It, in, it includes thefts from, from motor vehicles, shoplifting, theft from buildings. Now, there's one uh, uh, term here uh, that should be uh, talked about. Uh, it's because from, for larceny theft, it says uh, taking away the property of, from the possession of another. Well, that's not always true. It could be in the constructive possession of another. Uh, and let me explain legally what constructive possession is. So if I come into a library and I go into the back and I and I pick out one of the cubicles there to, to work on, I have my laptop there and I've been there for an hour or whatever, and I have to um, go out to make a phone call or I have to go to the restroom or whatever. So I just leave that stuff there and I go and I stay gone for 15 to 20 minutes and I come back and my laptop is gone. Well, technically that's, that laptop was not in my possession when it left, but legally it was in my constructive possession because the law sees that cubicle uh, as long as you hadn't left it for a, a, like a day or two, they the law sees that cubicle as my, mine, and anything within that that I've laid claim to it. So anything within that cubicle during that time frame, whether I'm there or not, is considered in my possession. Motor vehicle theft, the theft or attempted theft of a motor vehicle. A motor vehicle is not a self propelled uh, vehicle that runs on land. It is, a, a motor vehicle is a self-propelled vehicle that runs on land, not on rails. Motor vehicle theft, car checking, car check, the taking of a motor vehicle directly owned by the, uh, by the owner by force. Legally, car jacking is a type of robbery, not a motor vehicle theft. It counts for just over 1% of all car thefts. Arson, the burning or attempted burning of property with or without the intent to defraud. Uh, it does not include fires of unknown or suspicion origin, origin because they've not determined invest, through investigation yet what caused the fire. Now, this origin, this became a part one fence added to UCR in 1979. Um, so the burning or attempted burning of property with or without the intent to defraud. Let's take a look at NCVS. The NCVS is the National Crime Victimization Survey. This was created in 1972 uh, and it's based on victim self-reports. This is managed by uh, the data is collected by the Bureau of Justice Statistics, and it's also managed by uh, uh, it's also managed by the Bureau of Justice Statistics uh, and it's, uh, the, the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, the surveys are done on the phone or in person by asking questions of more than 43,000 households or surveyed twice a year and it measures households touched by crimes. And people who support NCVS argue that this is a better measurement uh, than UCR because UCR is only based on re uh, reported known crimes reported to police only. So therefore, there's all these uh, unreported crimes that police never hear about. For example, rape. Only one in five rapes are reported. So use NCVS, people who believe in this say that NCVS is designed to measure what they call the dark figure of crime. And what is meant by the dark figure of crime is the unreported crime. Now, NCVS has several weaknesses too. Uh, one being uh, exaggeration, uh, embellishment by the people they're, they're, they're interviewing. They can't, the people being done doing the interviewing really can't vouch for the information they're telling them. Um, but the biggest uh, drawback or the bi biggest weakness of the NCVS 
um, is that uh, the the six offenses that make up the NCVS are not based on any state or federal statutes. They're only just survey questions. The NCVS, they include uh, data on rape, robbery, assault, burglary, personal and household larceny, and motor vehicle theft. Now we notice um, uh, we noticed a couple offenses that are absent in this that are in UCR, and that would be murder and arson. So these six offenses here do not conform to any state or federal statutes. These are only survey questions to ask uh, uh, are the per person who they're talking to. That's the biggest major weaknesses of the NCVS.